En segundo lugar, eh, a mi izquierda, intervendrá la doctora Nidia Brás, de la Universidad del Algarve, en Portugal. Es licenciada en Biología, eh, máster y doctora en Ingeniería Agroindustrial y profesora de la Universidad eh, del Algarve. Ha trabajado en el campo de la ciencia alimentaria, es autora de varios libros, eh, participó en la creación de la Escuela Superior de Salud y ha desempeñado diversos cargos en la dirección de la Universidad del Algarve. Es miembro electo del Senado y del Consejo General de, la universi de esta Universidad del Algarve y miembro de la Comisión Científica del Centro de Estudios eh, y Desenvolvimiento en Salud, bueno, lo he dicho mal, también tendría que haberlo pronunciado en portugués, donde coordina eh, el estudio del que nos va a hablar, eh, The Survey of Health and Aging eh, in the Region of Algarve, eh, por siglas SARA. Eh, es un compromiso eh, en la Asociación Europea para la Innovación sobre el Envejecimiento Activo y Saludable. Sobre esto versará su ponencia. I must apologize for speaking in English, but it's safer for me and for you. Um, I'm here to present today some preliminary results of our first studies regarding uh, the SHARA um, project in the Algarve. I must begin saying that this is not a set of results that rep represents the population in the Algarve. This is a set of preliminary results that only values for the subjects we have inquired so far. I must strengthen this because there is a lot of confusion and a lot of in misinformation published about uh, individual conditions that uh, lays on results and presentations like mine. I hope in one year's time, in two years' time, to be able to publish results that are representative of the Algarvian community above 60 years old. But this is not the case today, so uh, keep that in mind, please. The survey of health and aging in the region of the Algarve is a commitment our uh, research center, CESWALG, uh, prepared and presented to the European Innovation Partnership on Healthy and Active Aging. It is our belief that in order to be able to improve lifestyle and quality of living in the elderly, the first thing we must do is to know the real conditions people are in today. I believe this is also a major um, point for the European Innovation Partnership on Healthy, in, on healthy and at, Active Aging. For They say exactly the same. They say screening, as you can see there, is one of the key strategies to start, uh, to, to be able to, to add healthy years to life. And this is, that is our goal. Uh, European Innovation Partnership on Healthy and Active Aging aims to add extra years of healthy living to the years people live. Because as everybody already stated here today, we have been achieving this marvelous issue of adding life years to life. But what, I, what is in need now is for us to be able to add healthy years to life, not just more years. In order to, to set up our, our work, thank you very much. I was trying to see people and I'm too short, sorry. We, we put up a multidisciplinary team, our, our field workers, our uh, lab researchers, our, our all crew is set up with people coming from the different areas that work in our School of Health Studies. So we have people from nutrition, from pharmacy, from physical activity, osteoprosthetics, psychology, gerontology, and statistics. And all these people work together. To begin with, we, we did each of us studying in its own, in its own uh, field work. Uh, we did a, a good literature survey uh, 
apologies for the good, I believe it's good, <laughs> literature survey about what is being used as screening tools for, for uh, the different conditions. We decided we are going to use these instruments. I list them, I, I will list, list them in a while. Um, after having done that, uh, we constructed, we actually constructed our inquiry tool where we merged together all these questions from all these instruments, trying to make it a little more um, understandable and usable because it's a very long thing. Um, we, were, we are trying to know um, about lifestyle, about health, about social demographic ground information. So the questions are too many and the questionnaire may, may, may be too long, but it's useful for us to, to, to Sorry, 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 sorry. It's useful for us to, to, to do, do it like this. At the end, we ended up with a, a document that is 18 pages long with questions. And uh, in order to make it shorter, what we did is we organized things in a, in a neat way. So I'm asking your age and your um, school years in the beginning, and when I'm talking about depression, I ask the questions from uh, Isa Vaj's uh, geriatric depression scale, close together with those questions from Easy Care Elderly Assessment System uh, that concern the same subject, so that people won't be confronted with different um, sets of questions in separate ways. Anyway, it takes 45 minutes for me to interview uh, somebody, so we need to be seated down, we need to be in a calm environment and to have uh, space because people need to walk and sit down and, and, and stand up for, for us to perform all the evaluation measurements we, we, we try to do. So we try to go to visit uh, elderly associations, clubs, um, geriatric facilities, uh, parishes. Parishes normally have um, like ballrooms or gymnasiums. Um, even a, a, a general practitioner's uh, waiting room can, can be suited to do this. The practice is we've been doing this all over the Algarve. This is our map. Uh, the red dots are the places where we already collected um, questionnaires. You, ca you can see there are many more near the coast and the, the bottom line because there, there, there are more people living than in the, the inland mountains. But we try to, to go all over, going more often to the places where more, most people live. The places that have been um, hosting us, for, for, for us to say, are uh, very, very many different places, like uh, community councils, um, public cafeterias, um, senior universities. I, I put here some of the logos, but they are not all. Just to, to give, give you the way that, the idea that the community is involved and the community accepts us. We are not, our, our inquiry is not something that you don't notice. It's heavy, takes time, um, occupies people. And we have been very, very, very well um, um, uh, received all over the Algarve. So our inquiry tool, as I said before, puts together in one uh, single form um, things like uh, bags, um, um, bags. Um, well, let me go away. We, we, in, in fact, we have three um, main areas: so, four social demographic um, identification, which is a set of original questions we, we put together. Uh, nutritional condition, physical condition, and activity condition. You, you'll, you'll see uh, here uh, they, are, they are small 
samples, but the idea is um, to use tools that everybody knows. Some of them have already been spoken of uh, here, earlier this morning. And nutritional assessment, minimental as, uh, scale assessment. So at a certain point of our inquiry, we decide if there is cognitive deficit, we stop the questionnaire and we don't go further. Um, obviously, we use the results of mini mental uh, state um, examination. Before answering this, uh, obviously, there is a consentment form uh, we prepared according to the Helsinki de Declaration. And before, before all of that, we uh, applied for the Comissão Nacional de Proteção de Dados, which is the, the Portuguese national um, data protection uh, organization, to be, to be allowed because we are, reg we are registering um, things like um, health condition, diseases. We, are, we, are, we have uh, the possibility of further contact with people, so we needed to be allowed to, to, um, to interview these people and ask those questions. We, we've got that agreement. We submitted the questionnaire to the ethics committee of the local health authority. Already we also have that, that consentment. So as long as the, the institution accepts that we visit them, as long as the individual accepts in a written form to, to be, be inquired, we inquire, we register the answers not in 80 pages, but, but in a very neat one page registry form that took us ages to prepare. Um, and we keep the informed consentment together with that on our safe in our university. So we can go back to someone if we, if we find something frightening and we can go back to a group in a couple of years time if we want to, to make run a different uh, following follow up study. Uh, and all that is being taken in count. Let me talk a little bit about those dodgy results I was saying that are not representative of the Algarvian community. We, uh, the only condition we, we decided was in order to answer our questionnaire, one must be aged 60 or more than 60 years old. No matter if, you, if, you, if they feel uh, ill or in good health, uh, in good mood or in bad, in bad state. Uh, that's uh, absolutely um, regardless, not regarded. So at the end, we at present uh, have 184 valid results uh, and on all, on the, the overall of those results, most people live in their homes as expected either alone or with some family or even with some institutional support. And those uh, uh, 184 individuals are mostly we women with an average age of 74. From a certain point on, I'll, start, I'll, I'll be talking about results that only count, not the 100 and 84 um, inquired, valid, uh, but those who didn't fail the, the cognitive deficit barrier. So the numbers sometimes seem to be uh, not uh, right, but they are, they are right. So here is the, the distribution of gender in, in our sample. This is a problem for us. I'll, I'll deal with it later. Um, this is our the, the living is um, distributed, so uh, at home mostly, at home with uh, some support, a big portion uh, uh, of people. So again, in the Algarve, as in, in Spain, families take care. The Algarve is mainly rural, rural and urban. 
this seems uh, funny because everybody knows the Algarve as a place to, for, for people to go to the beach, but uh, <laughs> we have very small uh, cities, most of them near the shore, and we have uh, a small uh, land, uh, cultivated land, spreading all uh, uh, along the coast. And then we have small fishing uh, and, and um, shellfish uh, working people living in the, in the nearest uh, shore. And um, what we found about the, the, way peop the, the place where people live is that rural, rural communities are important. And an enormous amount of people uh, uh, fr from our sample uh, have a, a living environment they identify as rural. This is their perception. The level of education of our elderly population is um, sad, sadly low. Uh, 33% had no formal education, 47% um, low level, which means, as some, somebody said earlier, um, the primary schooling not finished in most, most of the case. We have information more detailed about these results, but uh, to try to make things si simpler, uh, we conjugated some of our uh, results here. Cognitive, def cognitive deficit takes up away from our study 38% of the respondents in all the sample. If we look at what happens in a, in a daycare facility or in a senior residence, the number goes much, much higher. And now uh, I would like to talk about a few um, answers that are very gen gender dependent or gender associated. For instance, um, age is different between uh, female and male. Our, our, our men are, um, have a median age of 79. Uh, I'm using medians because we, uh, if we consider average, uh, the result is, is, is poor. As some outliers, uh, people that live longer, longer, uh, would make results look strange. While our female are 76 years old. Occupation, obviously, was gender different. Most of our respondents don't work anymore, or if they work, it's not formally. But uh, if we ask what did you do when you were working, obviously, um, Women were housewives. Women uh, worked in the field. That fisheries and agriculture is merged together, but I know I can tell you that is working in, the agri in agriculture. And men, um, women also sell at, at uh, shops, so they, they are uh, a bigger portion working in trade. But when you go to those professions that are related to higher education, such as administration and education and science, the numbers of, of males are much bigger. So it, there is a gender difference here. Obviously, we can look at this and think about education. Um, although everybody as none or low education as, as a, a, a common uh, thing. If we look at women, again, none is much bigger in women. And if we look at higher education, men are much bigger in, in higher education. So our, our elderly in the Algarve look like this. We try to take some information uh, using uh, regular statistics from our results, and some, some, some of them are quite expectable. When income is at adequate depression, incidency decreases. Um, we, in our um, social demographic characterization, there is a question that asks, uh, what do you think about your income? Is it enough? Is it, is it barely enough? Or do you have a surplus every, each month? So this is, 
the, in the income adequation perception, and it correlates uh, with GDS um, in, a, in, a, in a value that with a value a Spearman's uh, correlation that is uh, significant. We also realized that uh, the, the place where people live uh, conditions caregiving. To take care of a spouse or to take care of a, um, a cousin is much more common in rural than in urban um, environments. Here, the results in the seashore are not, are not um, relevant because the number is, is really quite small. Nutritional condition, we, we tried to use um, MNA, MNA and NSE and we realized um, they don't correlate well with each other and uh, probably this is because mini nutritional assessment is a tool uh, designed for hospitals and um, patients and we are inquiring people that uh, are in good in better health condition um, in the hospitals we concern about malnutrition we concern about um, big de dehydration in in the in the community dwelling citizens we worry about overweight obesity obesity uh, obese sarcopenia, the, the diseases that come with these overweight situations. So, pro sorry, probably we will end up saying that NSI is, is more adequate, but cannot really be sure now. Depression and nutritional risk correlate significantly. And I, I would like to emphasize this result. We use two scales to evaluate the risk of fall, and in both cases, risk of fall, high risk, risk of fall, affects 95% of our respondents. Um, in females, the risk go, goes r r rather high. The easy care system allows us to, to predict dependency and rupture of care, and here we have uh, concerns also. I'm, I'm fastening. Just to finish with something nice to say, we can um, affirm that active women are less depressed than non-active women. So POMA relates significantly with GDS in a way that if those people who are involved in the community that go out, that um, take part in social activities show lower, um, lower uh, levels of depression. And I would like to finish just pointing out uh, our future work ideas. We want to continue collecting data until it becomes to be a study uh, that represents the Algarve population. We need to increase sampling among men. We want to visit uh, those places where men gather to, to make sure we, we get a, a male response. And with bigger numbers, with bigger uh, sample, we would like to screen three, three groups separately. People's live, people living in senior residences, separately from attending daycare, and separately from living independently. And obviously, to continue with further data analysis. Thank you very much for your attention.